Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So in this video we'll be discussing five ways to get better at reading tarot. Um, there is also a text version of this content that will be linked in the description below. So the first way that you can get better at reading tarot is super simple and you can do it as soon as you get your cards and that is to stop and look at the card itself. Memorization is all well and good, but tarot cards are designed for you to actually look at them. So when you're learning, it's the best way, in my opinion, to purchase a deck with illustrated pip cards. So a pip card is the numbers um, ace to nine. So this is number three. Um, and the reason I say to get illustrated pip cards is because in some tarot decks, only the major arcana or the trump cards are illustrated as well as the court cards the pip cards just have the symbols on them that you may um, remember from playing cards so they'll have hearts or they'll have pentacles and just you know the number of that symbol as represents a card and that doesn't give you much to look at and kind of relies on you memorizing you know what exactly that card means which you will be able to do as you uh, progress, but you don't have to. So if when you buy a deck with illustrated pip cards, so again, I'll just click there so you can see. Now this gives you a lot more information than just the symbols. So you can look at what the figures are doing, the expression on their faces, or as this is birds, you can look at the body language of the birds. Um, are there other people or figures in the cards? And how do the figures relate to one another? You know, what are they actually doing? What are they doing to each other? Are they looking at each other? Are they smiling at each other? Are they turned away? Um, and what's happening with the props? How are they being used or displayed? So, um, you know, for example, this is the uh, Three of Vessels in the Wildwood Tarot. So in a Rider Waite Smith, that would be Three of Cups. And in the cups kind of system, you'll see lots of different cups, obviously, in the, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? I've forgotten the word that I'm looking for, but basically in the, um, there's loads of different cups, but the cups will all be doing something different. So they may be being handed to someone, they may be being drank out of, they may be being, I don't know, thrown at somebody's head those things mean something different and then as well as the main symbols of the card you want to look at other symbols like stars or suns or water and think about what those things mean part of moving beyond rote memorization and actually interpreting a tarot spread is simply learning to look at the reading in front of you rather than your keywords so take notes on your reading before you pick the book up to check now the second way that you can improve your tarot reading is to study tarot before bed. So sleep is when most of our memory gets filed and sorted, along with a hell of a lot of other things. A lot of this process happens in dreams. I've mentioned before that studying tarot is a great way to unlock, to unlock more wisdom in your dream time, as it allows you to understand your own dream language a bit better. But studying something in the few hours before bed means it's at the forefront of your mind, and making more of those details clearer and available in your short-term memory. This makes it easier for your brain to put them into your long-term memory. As the brain sleeps, it often works on problems. This is why the proverb, sleep on it, often holds true. But studying tarot before bed can help your mind investigate the similarities, contrasts and relationships between the cards, allowing you to actually interpret readings with greater ease. Now, the third way that you can improve your tarot reading is to pull cards to describe the things that have already happened. So I think putting a reading to, you know, um, working out the relationships between the cards and what a card means in a certain point in a spread as opposed to a different point is to do a reading on something that's already happened. You already know most of the facts. Knowing what the cards are describing can help you learn what the cards can describe and how detailed they can actually be. So, you know, you may think that the uh, 
that the Queen of Swords only means refers to a woman, for example, but you might pull it in a spread that you're doing on the past where you might discover that, oh, actually, it can also mean truth or truth telling. So that's a really easy way to actually get to grips with just how many different meanings the cards have and how detailed they can be. And there's also the benefit of receiving another viewpoint or potentially unseen wisdom on the past too. Now the fourth um, way to get better at doing tarot is a common one and it's to pull predictive cards daily. So if you do a basic predictive reading, whether that's one card, three cards, each day for two weeks and record what you think will happen and then crucially record what does happen investigate any discrepancies if you thought the moon card was referring to a psychic event and that didn't happen think through your day and find something that's also related to the moon did someone lies did someone's lies come to light for example once you've done it with one card for each day try and going up to two or three card spreads sticking with the same spread for each two week period. Any more cards than three is too much really for this exercise but there are hundreds of useful two and three card spreads around the internet for you to use. The best way to get better at tarot or indeed anything is to simply practice. To do more readings and actually check whether you were right or not, not only can you see which cards you may need to do more practice with but confirmation really helps boost your psychic skills whether it's a miss or a hit knowing what actually happened increases your psychic muscle. You know, you wouldn't keep throwing a javelin and not measure where it landed. Now, the fifth way is a little bit more complicated, but it's still really easy to do. So you want to write your own flashcards or notes or, you know, bullet journal, however style you want to do this. So you want to write, you know, little notes for each layer of the tarot card. So tarot cards have layers. The, there are so many things that each tarot card can represent, but they all basically have three layers. Those are person, process, and event. Some tarot cards focus more on one layer than another, so court cards normally represent a person. The major arcana, or trump cards, normally represent a very large event or a deep magical process, and the minor arcana, or the pit cards, are normally daily events or processes. But each card has all three layers still within it. It's easy to get really confused when you ask about a person and get an ace when you expected a court. But think about the daily events or processes that a particular ace describes. What kind of person does those things, is going through that process, or could bring that event slash process into your life? Same with court cards that don't always represent people. Look at the kind of person that the court card is describing. So the Queen of Swords represents someone who is aloof, a loner, and a strategist. Those personality quirks can also be processes or events. So do you need to withdraw from a situation, to be on your own, work on your business or academic strategy? While rote memorization is not the key to tarot, sometimes it is helpful to write down this process. Start with the obvious keywords for each card, and start with your own, and then add in the books or the decks underneath. For example, the Queen of Swords is normally a person, so I'd start with that layer. So a few keywords about the Queen of Swords as a person. So mine would be that they are aloof, they are, are, they are alone, they are single, as in not married, and they are a strategist. And then from the um, deck book that comes with this deck, uh, they also say that about honesty, about focus, that they're astute and direct. So the process layer, that's, so what process is given these personality traits? So that might be seeking solace or drawing strength from being alone and working on your own stuff. Um, it might talk about uh, distrust and focusing on your own perception, learning to stand on your own two feet, being strategic, planning, thinking before you act, seeking the truth, eliminating distractions, asking questions, or speed, cutting through politeness or red tape. So all of these processes that we've kind of drawn out from this card, that is all thinking about the kind of person that the Queen of Swords is and what they, what things, what actions, what processes they take or might be associated with. And again, we can go on to the events layer. 
So what kind of events might this kind of person create? What events might cause these personality traits? So breaking up with someone romantically or otherwise, withdrawing, removing something from your life, telling or being told the truth, a direct message or a truth that doesn't need to be investigated. And again, those are just some of the many meanings of that particular card. Um, you could have a whole 10 minute video just on that one card. But hopefully you can now see how a tarot card can exist on all three layers. When you have a card in a reading that doesn't seem to fit, like you're having a court card where you would expect, so if the reading is um, uh, Okay, if the reading is how can I get a job and you pull a load of court cards, they might not necessarily mean people. They often will, but if you've got something in that spread that doesn't make sense, um, I, are you reading that card on the right layer? So are you being asked to become more like that kind of person? Or is it describing an event or a process that you need to undertake? So um, just to kind of sum up, the five easy ways that you can really boost your tarot reading skills are to stop and actually look at the card and what is going on in the card, what symbols are there, what actions are there, what figures are there. Uh, study, do your tarot studying before you go to sleep. Pull cards to describe things that have already happened. Pull predictive cards daily. And to write your flashcards or your notes or just generally think about the different layers of each tarot card. So as I mentioned there is a text version of this uh, content that will be linked down in the description. So thanks very much for being here and I will see you uh, on Sunday.